What's up guys, Heeking here bringing you another review on this week's Boku no Hero. So yeah, My Hero Academia, chapter 350. So last time we left off, I don't believe there was a chapter last week, was there? No, so I think there was a break. And now we're getting the uh, we're getting the uh, chapter this week. So yeah, uh, 350. We left off with uh, Deku racing towards the mainland in order to get there to help uh, Bakugo and the others fight Shigaraki. We left with Yubiti and Froppy fighting uh, Toga, and then I think it, it, it ended with Shoto facing his brother Darby. So yeah, at the uh, Kamino district. So yeah. 350 remember guys to like and subscribe and yeah let's go into this chapter then it's a very again we we, we are we were getting Dobby's origins he did uh, last chapter did end with him explaining before he fought Shoda to explain to him how he became Dobby and we get this in this chapter so yeah it's a very it's a very unexpected revelation in terms of how it ties in with all for one of all people but yeah, we, we start with the Doctor, if you remember that Doctor who, who helped All For One do all of this, who was being arrested, and we get the, uh, I don't know this dude, I don't know if this is one of the characters we've seen before, but we get this guerrilla police officer, and we're, we were seeing him talking, and he's like, everything was for this moment, we had to search for so long for all those small started seeds. And we get this big revelation basically of how they collected all these children who were going to be these vessels for All For One in case Shigaraki didn't turn out the way he did. And the impression I got was that those children all end up becoming Nomus, maybe. But uh, as we go through, we see Darby on top of uh, on top of All Might's statue. You know, he's burning himself up all high, and he's like, "Those few wicked seeds worth your being vessels." And you know, Darby's skin, you know, the skin grafts that he's had, they're all burning away, basically. And we're cutting to eleven years ago, Sakado Peak, when Darby basically burn himself to death essentially hot hot no I don't want to die I still I still haven't shown him what I can really do and uh, we're coming to the doctor talking and he's like you know he too was another child tossed away for harboring a bit of darkness forget darkness it's almost like he had the entire world from the very beginning and we're seeing all for one approach Dobby all those years ago he still hasn't fought all might it seems because he's it looks like he still has his normal face he's wearing his little trench coat and his hat you know, it was for everything, and he's walking to Darby, and we, we see Darby wake up in hospital, you know, it, lo it looks like he's in a children's hospital, you know, he does a get well car, you know, uh, get well soon, Mr. Sleepyhead, and he's questioning where he is, am I still alive, and he goes into the classroom, it seems, and there's these kids, and he's like, ah, oh, he's awake, Mr. Sleepyhead woke up, and, and you know, Darby's like, what is this place, and then it's this point voice, and... It's a, we get this big reveal that he was basically in a coma for three years after he burnt up. Uh, the doctor and all for one, they did what they could in order to fix him, and they knew skin grafts and they used body parts it seems to fix Darby back up to recreate him basically. And yeah, like I imagine you would be surprised. I mean, you're this kid, you've been abused by your dad, uh, you're getting beaten and bullied, and then one, and then you burn up, and then you wake up one day, and suddenly you've got a new face, you've got a new voice. You know, everything's changed. Everything's like not how you thought it would be. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, three years. What happened to me? I was at Senkodo, uh, Senkodo Peak when I burnt up, and I have to go back. And we get this dude that comes in wearing a sunflower face, and I, don't, I, I think this is his face. He's got a sunflower for a head. Uh, you can't do that. And he's like, "Why not? You live here now with everyone else. All of these guys will become your new family. I'm sure you'll warm up to them quickly." And he's like, uh, "Hold on a second. I gotta go home. My dad. He was probably busy and couldn't come and see me, right?" Surely he's worried sick about me. I, I I did something terrible. I said something terrible. I need to apologize to mom and the others. I just want dad to look at me again. And it's kind of depressing to see this. Like, uh, Toya was basically a sweet kid. He was a sweet kid who just wanted to, you know, prove to his dad that he wasn't a failure, that he could be what he wanted him to be, and he screwed up. And it cost him this. And Endeavor's own uh, relationship with his children ended up pulling them into this sort of darkness and that's the result you know we ended up getting Darby but for him for Toya it's it's a complete completely different matter he tried to prove to his dad that he could be as strong as he could be and he ended up burning himself essentially to death only to wake up three years later under the care of these people who want to use him for their own methods 
and he, he, he basically realizes he's a completely different person and he finds out that you know you, you, you won't be able to use your power like before you have sustained great damage in several organs you know he's taking him to this laptop and he's seeing all this info your your somatic nervous system is impaired causing sensations like pain to become duller your body has become weaker you will never go back to how you were before and Dario is just shocked by this he's just like gobsmacked just like we would have wanted you to join our ranks prior to all of this. We put so much work into you, but alas, you were a failure. And and he's he's getting that double fluff. He's getting that he's getting that he's getting that same words being spoken to him again. You know, his dad called him a failure. These people who rescued him are now saying, you know, we did all of this, and you're still a failure. You know, it's just it's just it's just flashbacks. It's just life just hitting him in the face. You know, he's gotten a second chance at life. Only to be told again, you're a failure, like, and, oh, did I hit a nerve? How pitiful your life must have been, but we may be able to restore your firepower to what it was before. What do you think? You can become a part of our family, go to classes, have fun, and he just, he loses it. He snaps at that moment. He snaps and like, shut up. I have no intention of learning from any other man. He wants to learn from his dad. He wants to learn from, from that dude, from that guy, from that one main man, but uh, not from others. And it was too late to show him the way. He was too burnt, uh, burnt out already. Uh, even him, who controls everything, found it impossible to manipulate that obsession he had for his father. And and the next panel we see, it looks like he ended up burning that hospital or that hospital school, that kids' school, whatever it was. He burned it to the ground, it seems, and he and he escaped. They were nothing more than spares in case anything happened to Shigaraki Tomura. An incredibly strong yet deformed sapling filled with hatred, the perfect vessel for the Deba King. Dobby was one of those spares, but he was a failed creation. And you've got you know you know you've got the gorilla police officer just sort of standing there listening to this, and he's like, "Why are you talk? Actually, why what are you trying to say? Is this another one of those boring, all for one, had it all planned from the beginning histories?" And and the doctor's like, "This story is just a warning for me to you. That thing lives in a world detached even from ours." And it's interesting to see that. It's interesting to see to get this perspective that Darby was supposed to be this vessel for all for one, but it didn't work out that way. And in that result, in in the in the happenstance to like uh, uh, to 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 recreate this guy, to bring him back to life, and to have him be this vessel, it didn't work out the way it intended, and and it backfired on them essentially. And he ended up becoming this this vengeful being of hatred. Essentially, it's a. Uh, yeah, you can argue it's probably an unexpected plus for all for one, but on the other hand, it's sort of like I, the, the 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 feeling I'm getting is that Darby is much much worse than anything that all for one could be technically, because this kid, this kid who had a life who was destroyed by it, ended up getting a second chance, and he just ended up becoming this worse, much worse thing. Like because what we the relations we get from this is that Darby essentially is dead. He should be dead. He's a walking corpse. But his hate is keeping him alive. Um, the reason we let him go was because his body, because of his body, after waking up, it shouldn't have even lost a month. When that broker brought him in, we were generally surprised. Why did you come back? Why are you still alive? Yuji Kosan, it was you, wasn't it? The one who kept me alive this long. And we get that reunion. We get that reunion with Darby and the doctor. And I wanted to hear Darby's real motives, so I brought him in when we got the chance to talk privately. So you figured out why you're still why you're still alive. I'm over the moon. Looking at this living corpse over here, I can get a good, solid idea of what you all did to me back then. And yeah, and I, I believe he's referring to Kuragiri, uh, Kurug who again he was he was this other kid. He was this other kid who they brought back to life, and he was basically this corpse that that's now this other being. And it's pretty much similar to what they did to Darby. They, you know, they, they integrated, they put various different body parts on him, they grafted onto him to keep him alive, to bring him back. And yeah, essentially he is that he is this walking corpse. He is this entirely different person now. But he's you know, he's still kicking. He's still kicking. And Darby's like, you know, the reason I came back here is because this is the perfect spot for a funeral. And you know, Doctor's like that one look said it all. This body that overcame even death was held together only by the flames of vengeance. It's very similar to say something like Darth Maul from Star Wars who he got cut in half, he died essentially, but the reason the reason they explain how he survived is that his hate kept him alive. The, the hate and the anger is what kept him alive. Hate for, you know, Kenobi is what kept him alive to keep him going. 
uh, because essentially he was again he was just a corpse walking like he should have been dead but hate kept him alive and it's kind of what they're trying to say here is that that you know that vengeance that hate that flame of vengeance if you will is what kept Darby going it's what kept Toya going and we cut back to to the fight with we cut back to Darby talking to Shota and he's like Shota I did go back home although my body was weaker than before and I didn't have anything to look forward to in life anymore and we get this look, we get this look of Toya wanting to go back, you know, he wants to be recognized by his father, he wants to make up, he wants a second chance with his family. Even a little bit, I wanted to change, I wanted to see that change. I was reminded once again, and he gets home, and he sees that they've made this funeral sh uh, prior for him, and he witnesses, he sees that nothing has changed, three years have passed, and in those three years, you know, Sh Shota was born instead. And Endemar was still doing the same things that he was doing with Toya, training him, beating him. You know, of the reason why I was born, I'm just, you know, I had that same story continued. Three years passed, but that, yet that same story continued. Of that reason, or, or, or of the reason why I was born, I'm just a defective product. My life has no meaning. My family has already moved on from me. So yeah, he saw the funeral prior, he accepted the fact, he saw that they'd moved on from him. And that Shota was just another toy, basically, being used by his dad to, again, same thing. Like, he was discarded. It's sort of, again, another comparison would basically be uh, Lotso from Toy Story 3. You know, he, he went missing, and his kid just got a replacement. That's kind of what it is. That's kind of what it feels like, that Toyo was basically replaced. No care in the world. Same thing going on. The mom, the, the other siblings, they didn't do anything. Just, you know, they just carried on with their normal lives. The same thing happened. Endeavor didn't change at all. And he realized, I'm just I'm just an item for him. I'm not a son. I'm not a child. He didn't care about me. He just wants someone to use to carry on his legacy as, 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 a, as, a, as, a, as a sort of a trophy case, if you will. Or a trophy wife, if you will. In this case, a trophy son. The things that used to shape you lose all meaning. I devoted myself just to make my flame stronger. I couldn't face him or being weak. Yeah, even as this body burnt and rotted, I could no longer feel anything. I've seen many of his moves, and uh, you wanted to, and, and Shota realizes you wanted to die from the start. I the camera cut off there, so yeah, give a second. So yeah, as Shota, or oh, uh, sorry, as Toya is explaining, or Darby is explaining all of this too to Shota now. He's pretty much saying every time he protected, he protected the city, every time the crowd cheered for him, my heart pounded like crazy. And we see this panel of him at his own funeral, at his own tr shrine, basically. You know, and he's like, you know, Toya died and Darby was born. And we get that continuation with uh, with the Doctor. He's like, heat is energy born from all things in creation, springing forth and moving. All for one who tries to live forever could never have it. The kind of heat that can only drive you towards death. So yeah, and we see the shot of Dobby now. He's basically burning so hot now that all the skin grafts that he's had have basically burnt away. And now we see him for what he is, this very charred, very burnt up corpse basically. Something even the Demon Lord gave up on. The fatal flames of insanity. And yeah, well, you can tell, you can just see from, from this image, the way Hore uh, Horikashi draws Darby here, that he's lost it. He's snapped. He's insane. He's just this walking corpse of insanity now. And he, uh, he's, you know, the fire is so hard that not only has it burnt off the skin grafts and the skin, whatever that he's had to heal him, to fix him up, it's burning all my statue as well. It's melting it. And, uh, yeah, and, and now, and, yeah, Toya look like, Dobby looks terrifying here. He looks, he looks like a monster. He really does look like this sort of fire demon, essentially. And he's like, I will burn everything precious to him down to the ground. That will be the proof that I ever existed. Flash fire fist. And he goes for the flash fire fist. And, you know, Shota's like, like, I'm going to let you do that. And, uh, the chapter ends. And then we get the big revelation that, you know, my Hero Academia is going to be on break next week, so no chapter next week either. So that's crazy. We we had, we had a break last week and another break next week. So yeah, this is definitely going to be a slow, slow, slow week uh, or month, if you will, for for Boku no Hero. But uh, this was a very good chapter. We did get a good understanding of how Dobby came to be and what the reasons for that were. 
uh, and how awful one was connected to all of this, and that even he couldn't control this kid. That that, 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 that you know, Toya or Dobby was so far gone that he couldn't take him to be this spare vessel that he wanted. And uh, yeah, like he's just this corpse, basically. He's this, he's just this corpse whose hate is keeping him alive and walking. So yeah, do I think Dobby's gonna die by the end of this? Yeah, I do. I think he's gonna die. Uh, I don't think there's gonna be any sort of redemption arc here whatsoever. If anything, I feel like uh, Shota is gonna be forced to bring and kill his brother. And maybe in his last moments as he's dying, maybe he'll hold him as he's dying. And there'll be some sort of forgiveness there perhaps. But I just don't see Darby surviving this because if uh, with the revelation that he's basically sort of like Kuro Giri, that he's this corpse that was just put together and using different organs and skins and that and body parts, it's not his own body essentially, basically. So again, they're making a very big emphasis on the fact that hate is what's keeping him going at this point. He shouldn't be alive, he shouldn't be moving, but he is. And that's what it is. It's that will, it's that strong will keeping him going. And... Yeah, it needs to be extinguished. I think at this point, it's safe to say he needs to go out. He he needs to be put down. He needs to be put down, not only because he's a villain, but because it's a mercy. It's a mercy at this point. And it, it, it makes sense why Endeavor wouldn't be there to finish it off because, you, you know, a father killing his own son, it would be too much for him to do. And it, it makes sense for Shota to be, you know, Shota, the one who, who was there to replace him, but also because he's the one who who fought against his dad's uh, methods and, and basically became his own person and is basically proving to be better than him, essentially, and being the bright future that, uh, you know, Toya couldn't be. It makes sense for him, for the young... And, and plus, he's the younger brother as well. So, yeah, it's going to it's gonna be interesting how this goes out. I'm curious if, if maybe his siblings will maybe get involved, but they probably won't since they weren't, they weren't trained. I guess they got their mom's freezing abilities, not their fire abilities. Toya and Shota were the exception essentially but um i'm curious to see how this because i'm curious to see how this is going to go out. i'm curious to see how this fight is going to conclude it's starting now and it's going to be interesting to see how it concludes a lot of the fights are starting now basically ubt and froppy versus toga and now shoto versus uh darby and then obviously we're still waiting for uh, deku to get there so we can take on so you can take on shigaraki but yeah the the set pieces are being set up, basically, you know, the chest, the pawns are being set up, and we're getting these final fights set up, essentially, that's what it's all about. But this was a pretty good chapter, it was a very good emotional chapter. It's tragic to see, like, you know, how, you know, how Toya came to be, how, how this all led to him becoming Dobby, it is tragic, but, uh, the only conclusion, at least for me, when reading this and seeing how it's going, is, is like, he needs to be put, he needs to die, he needs to be put down and be put out of his misery, basically, because... This is someone who's not going to stop until he's accomplished his mission. Like, Dobby's not going to stop. He's not going to stop the hatred. And just the the way his body looks now, and the way he's expressing himself, the way he... It says it all. It says it all. Like, he is a lost cause at this point. So, he needs to go down. Like, I'm, ho I'm hoping th these are going to be fights where the heroes realize they cannot save the villain. Like, it needs to happen. And it needs to be a, it needs to be it needs to be done emotional. It needs to be done emotionally, and it needs to be done in a way where it's like, I understand, I do, but I can't let you do this, and I'm gonna put you down. I'm gonna put you out of your misery, and I'm sorry. I'm really sorry for this, and that's what it needs to do. That's not what needs to happen. But yeah, overall decent chapter. I enjoyed it. Break next week, so yay, happy for that. Um, honestly, I, I guess they need it. They need it. I'm not gonna complain too much, but uh. I prefer the older method where you get a nice good free chapters and then a break and then a nice free chapters. Like this is this is very uh, like sort of annoying really. Uh but yeah, um it is what it is. Anyway guys, that's my review and thoughts on the uh, chapter three hundred and fifty. I hope you liked it. As always remember to like and subscribe and I shall see you when I shall see you guys. Take care and goodbye.